first. That's when the pilot, when he, when the pilot or he or she says read, that's when they think they're stabilized. Don't wait five minutes to re write that data down. Because it may have changed by then. Alright, write it down, write down when they say read. Airspeed is, you know, this is what we're looking at here. Record airspeed first. Second most critical thing, probably altitude. Okay, so record the altitude. Then temperature, ambient temperature, OAT as we call it. Then the power set. As a pilot, if you're going to touch, that's the last thing he's going to, he or she is going to adjust, okay? It's the power set. So write the power set down last, okay? And then maybe your fuel quantity, okay? That's your, so you know what the weight was at that point. Remember, we use the weight ratio in these equations. Okay, so that's the first data point. Second data point, pilot's going to pull back the, the manifold pressure a couple inches, and we're going to sit there some more while the airplane decelerates. Now, nice thing about it going fast first is that it goes the time between those resulting points. Airplanes de destabilize faster than they do accelerate, okay? They, they uh, decelerate faster than they accelerate. So, so you know, we're going to pull it back a couple inches and we're going to let it stabilize again. And we're going to read those same set of parameters again, okay? And we will do that, you know, We'll start out here with, with this data point, out here at the high speed, and then we'll get this one, and then this one, and then this one, and this one, and this one. Now down here, it's going to get tough, because right in this area, it's real easy for the airplane to decide to go back here. <laughs> you know, so getting these in the bucket, as we call it, these down here in the bucket of this curve, are tough because what will happen is it'll go back here. Well, once it goes back here, to get this next point, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to add power. I usually like to try and get a couple of backside points just for your amazement. <laughs> okay, they aren't really very important, but I, you know, I just like to show you how good I am. <laughs> But uh, but anyway, you have to start adding power. Once that starts happening, you know you're on the back side. Yes, sir? How is PHP computed for these? We'll take manifold pressure and RPM, and I think in your lab book you have a power chart. And we'll go in there and get that, and then we will correct it for ambient temperature. So that's the way this uh, this lab will go. Again, uh, you know, it's it's not terribly exciting. You know, it's like I say, performance is the hours and hours of boredom of flight test. Okay, Boiling control sometimes is the moments of sheer terror. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway. In fact, while we were talking to the uh, to the guys from North of Grumman about yesterday, or one of the moments of sheer terror, and that's dive testing, flutter testing, those kinds of things. When the airplane can come apart in a matter of split seconds. Uh, okay, so we're going to get those things that we talked about, and we're going to determine the uh, test density ratio again. You know, we've done deltas and thetas before, so same stuff, okay? Delta we get from, uh, you know, this equation. Or, you know, you can look that up in a table. Before, before handheld <laughs> calculators were so good, that's how long I've been doing this, all right? When I first started this, I had a, a desktop computer that took up about a third of my desk. It was electrical, 
okay, but it had all kinds of buttons on it. The neat thing it would do is take a square root. However, it had its problems because usually when you were busy talking to somebody or were turning around, one of your friends would come by and divide by zero. <laughs> it would try to solve that. <laughs> it would go sit there and go ka chunk ka chunk ka chunk. You had to go pull the card. That was the only, only way you could stop it if somebody divided by zero. <laughs> yeah, <I'm joking. laughs> so, so anyway, uh, some of, sometimes those things were a lot of fun when it boils down to it. But, it, but anyway, uh, there were tables for determining delta. I had a ten-foot table. I have still got it somewhere, I think. A, a ten-foot altitude table with the value for delta, you know, a whole bunch of numbers. Okay, once, you know, we get delta, we solve using this equation. This is pressure altitude, so again, you want to make sure your altimeter is set for 29.92. That's right, okay? Because that's what goes in here. Temperature ratio, well, we've got the equations there. Outside air temperature plus 273.16, or some of you used 1.5, various places, you know, who cares? It's in the second decimal place. <laughs> uh, and then we divide that by the standard temperature, 288.16 or 1.5, okay. Uh, and then we determine the, our weight at that data point and then we get our weight ratio. You know, this is the, the weight we're going to determine. This one, it was set by Piper, so we'll use it. Or we would set it, this is the, this is the kind of gross weight we want for our airplane. So we would use that number as our standard weight. And then we'd, you know, use that information to determine PIW and BIW. Here's calibrated airspeed over the square root of the weight ratio. For the power, we have the test brake horsepower, which we got off of our horsepower chart. Yes, sir. I know these equations, they have total weight and then the structural weight, but is there any effect on the CD position? I know we're using a point max or not. Well, determining CD, yeah. but is there an effect on that? On the there is some, but it's a secondary. Generally, the FAA wants us to do these tests at forward center of gravity at gross weight because what happens there? Why, why do they want us to do it up there? Well, it's stable, but what's the highest tail down load? Okay, so the wing now, you know, you, the balancing tail load is the highest at forward center of gravity. Maximum load on the tail. So it's a maximum load on the tail. That's why they want you to do it at a forward CG at maximum gross weight. Okay. That is going to be the most critical case. So as a result, that's the most critical thing. Now, several years ago when I was an Air Force Reservist, I got involved in the KC-10 refueler. KC-10 was a DC-10, and the Air Force wanted to use the landing data, the FAA landing data for the Air Force handbook, and they weren't sure that you could do that. They thought, man, you know, it, it probably may have not been conservative. Well, actually, it was much more conservative than the way the Air Force did it. And the reason was that the Air Force measured stall speeds at FCT, lowest tail down load, okay? While Civil measured them at forward CG, okay? The highest tail down load. So it turned out that the FAA landing distances due to that, you know, a performance parameter was much more conservative than doing it at FCG. There were a couple of other things involved, but 
But anyway, my analysis convinced them to go ahead and use the civilian landing distances for the KC-10. Okay, but anyway, here we are with these two equations, and these generate our data points because we're just going to take the values we get there and take them over here and plot them. Well, I mentioned for fixed pitch for cars, we add one additional term, and we call that NIW. And we have to have two sets of curves in order to get to what we get with one curve for, propeller, for constant speed propeller airplanes. Now, again, this curve, you know, you can take this and generate this by using the equations in reverse. Okay, and, and I'm going to want you to do that for your lab. Now, some of you compared, uh, compared uh, your position correction data with Piper. That was probably a mistake. Okay, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't complain too much about it, but here's the reason. The Piper system is a completely separate system, and that was one thing I think I forgot to mention while I was telling you. There is only two position corrections for this airplane. One for the Piper system, which we didn't do, okay. Another for our system. Our system is actually better than Piper's. <coughs> the Piper under wing probe was used specifically to make people who bought the airplane think they were going faster than they really were. That's the truth, that's the absolute truth, okay? In those days, at the time the Cherokee 6 was built, it was not required to publish your position correction. And so, Tug Piper, who was a Vice President of Engineering at the company at the time, took advantage of that and come up with that blade system that what it does, it's pretty accurate at stall speed. The farther you go away from stall speed, the worse it gets. And it's generally always a negative position correction. So the faster you go, the faster you think you're going. Okay, but you're really not. <laughs> All right. So, so don't make that comparison. However, for this stuff, you can compare. But, but you also find that it, it isn't true life because they ended up basing that on this phony system, so to speak. Okay. But I'd like for you to generate that curve so we really know what the Cherokee 6 is doing. Okay. Consider this, you know, like it's a brand new airplane. All right. Yes. Uh, the IWs and all this mean the meaning of it is segment or fragment or uh, weight segment. It's weight it's speed. weight corrected, yes. Weight That's speed. what he means when he yeah. says I don't. Yeah, right. Yeah, instrument and yeah. essentially means instrument and weight corrected. Okay. Okay. You know, okay. so it, it's supposed to have in it the, the airspeed cal and all those kinds of things. All right. <laughs> so that's what that's what we mean by that. But it's essentially a sea level standard value. Which, once you have a sea level standard value, you can go to other sets of conditions. And that's the, ni that's the nice thing about it. All right, questions. I think we're time for lunch, and I think this is the last slide. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just for analyzing, like when we did the calibration for the Piper 6, it was actually good when you got at high speeds, the correction was going down. Uh, at, at if you did it for the ship system, mm -hmm. for